nicely down there, using that cushion of water, and that's really the art here. The single paddle, oh, and burying his stern, coming up with the bow, and that's five seconds of penalty there. Just lost control at the vital moment, and that's not, that's not terribly difficult uh, here. The water pushing you both ways, and you really need a lot of power. Thierry Humo from Poitiers, the seventh two years ago in the Europa Cup. As I said, fifth after the first run, so a chance to improve, but better paddlers coming in in sending order, but he's really got to try and improve on that first time this morning to make them all push it that much more pressure on. And here he comes into that last gate, number 25, Coming down to the line, just over three minutes there. Burst through that final stopper. 3 10 11 for Thierry Humo. So slower than his first run this morning. At the moment, he's still in fifth place. And the overall leader at this moment is John Lugbill. That's after the first run, but a few paddlers yet to come before we see John again. Janko Brezigar of Yugoslavia. Martin Lang for West Germany at gate number 17 and in all sorts of troubles there. Just got a little deep and came almost to a stop. Coming down to 18 where he's got a turn round, come upstream through that water, you can see that wall of water, and now use that cushion to come across to 19, which is set very close to the concrete. It's come below 20, yet another upstream gate, there are nine on the course, that was the eighth one, as he comes down through the next two downstream gates. Green and white poles denoting those downstream turns. Sixth in the Junior World Championships a couple of years ago, but uh, He's had a quite a good season this year. He's had three international victories in this discipline. Lan in sixth place after the first run, coming to that final gate. And then he'll have the choice of route. Just about avoided that pole there. Which way is he going to go? Left, right or centre? He's going round the left-hand corner of that stopper and driving for the line now. And even puts his paddle across to try and gain that extra hundredth of a second. Martin Lang, that's the effort. On his way now, Jacques Avril of France. In seventh place after the first run. Burst through the stopper there. And this is Janko Brezigar of Yugoslavia down to gate number 16. Across to the right, has to go right across the stream there and turn the kayak, did that quite nicely. Big stroke going in there. And all the Canadian canoes made out of carbon Kevlar, very tough but very light, the sort of material that uh, we associate these days with Formula One racing cars, and it has to be tough. Hit a rock head-on, and uh, you need some protection. And now setting up for this gate number 24, you can see the problem there, if he gets swept down, he'll be eaten up by that stopper just below his stern. But the Yugoslavian, safe enough. A little wide there, out to his right, he'll have lost time there. And now, he's gone back through 24, doesn't matter, he's allowed to do that. Once he's safely negotiated that, it's perfectly allowed and goes across the line. Brezigar finishes his run, he goes into 12th place. This is another Yugoslav. Jose Vidmar in third place after the first run and challenging 
for the title of Europa Cup champion. Noir Jacqui Avril coming out of 17. Getting a little sideways there, floating a little and losing time, and he's lost time again there. he goes to 20 physical education teacher and was ninth two years ago in the world in the Europa Cup that's the best result he's ever had in this competition French very strong in all white water sports, uh, a sport that is very popular, very well supported in France, with uh, major training centres in Grenoble, Lyon, and uh, a good facility in Paris as well. Avril safely across the line. Remember, he was seventh after the first run, and at the moment he's uh, gone to 11th place. On the course now, David Hearn of the United States. The defending Europa Cup champion currently lying second after the first run. Look at the power and determination of this man. Coming out of gate number 14 is Jose Vidmar, third after the first run, and in fact the bronze medalist from two years ago in this competition. Unlike the World Championships, the Europa Cup decided over two races. The first one of those was a week ago on the River Liffey in Dublin. Today's race, well, your position is added to the position you finished in in Ireland. And the paddler with the lowest aggregate position will be the champion. And they work all the other medal positions out on the same method. Vidmar now with just three gates to go. Round he comes. See how tight he'll try and stay to that gate. As soon as he's round. Brings it round. And this really is tough paddling. Over three minutes to get down here. Has a little look round to his left there. Avoids that gate and decides that he's going to go through just on the left-hand side of that stopper. And across the line he goes. For Vidmar, where is he? Was in third place. So, further down the course here, this is number 22. It was Davy Hearn. Remember, he's trying to get back in the lead. The fastest man after the first run was his teammate, John Lugville. And so, he's got to find something like half a second if he's to go into the lead and stay clean. In other words, he must hit any of these poles. He comes from... Maryland, where next year's World Championships will be held. He's won no less than 18 National American titles in his paddling time. World champion in 85, but more important, he's defending that Europa Cup title at this moment. Three minutes, just over that, three minutes and 69 hundredths of a second was his time after the first run. Coming down towards the line now. And Jose Vidmar of Yugoslavia still holding on to his third place. David Hearn is now second. He hasn't got ahead of John Lugbill. So at the moment, still in the silver medal position. But here's the leader. Here's the world champion on no less than four occasions, John Lugbill of America. The man who leads this competition with a big chance of taking this title now. And Renato De Monte exiting gate number 14, coming down to 15 and the wave train of water. Neatly through there. The best he's ever been in Europa Cup was fourth, just out of the medals, and really striving to get his name on the leaderboard now. 
very important the performances of all these paddlers because apart from the individual categories all their performances count towards the overall nations cup the best country in both wild water racing and in slalom renato de monte no problems through that combination did well through there and now just watch him work Monty, one more gate to go. The Italian coach is running down the side. There's quite a lot of support from him here. And this looks a really good run from the Italian. He's really, really hard, working hard there. That's terrific stuff from him. Gave it absolutely everything that he could. De Monte goes into seventh place. Clear, no mistakes in terms of hitting the gates, but just behind on the clock. Well, here's John Lugbill. Just trying to improve on his run, first time round. Watch this man, the master. Look at the long arms there. He, weighs, he puts that paddle in, uses it almost as a rudder to turn him round. There's a good example again. He has enormous strength. As he goes through there, John Lugbill surely on his way to another Europa Cup title. And that's the skill of the master at work. Comes skirting round there. And this looks really good. You, I'm afraid, don't have the advantage of the clock to see, but I'm looking at the scoreboard. And John Lugbill looks to be in first place. He's got a five-second penalty for this run, but it doesn't matter. John Lugbill's first run will give him victory. And so John Lugbill is the man who looks to be in pole position. And the only man that threatens him is Jed Prentice of the United States. And here he goes into gate number 11 and 12, 13 and 14, the second of those cross-stream, up-river combinations. This is 13. He'll try and break out into the slack water there with his paddle nice and tight to the gate. That was really well done. Now use the current to come across to 14. And that's excellent paddling by Jed Prentice, and he's gone pretty close to the gate. Now back into the stream as he comes down towards 15 and 16. 15's not a big problem, but you've got to keep the canoe working. The stopper trying to throw him offline, but he's the master of that. 17, again, the stopper trying to disturb him, but Prentice on top of this. Nice and close to 18, and he really is working well, Jed Prentice, on this run. Uses that cushion of water, the haystack, to drive him on through 19. Absolutely, just inches away there from gate 20. Junior world champion two years ago. The best he's ever been in Europa Cup eighth, but surely he's going to improve on that. That time there on the top left of the screen, the time of John Lugville, who at this moment is the leader in the competition. He's now got one gate to go, and he's got to stay clean. If he can get inside that time, he'll be the champion. Little error there, he's got the clock ticking away, six... Seven seconds, where's he going to be? Two strokes to the line, and it's awfully close. Three minutes and 87 hundredths of a second. Absolutely clean, he goes third here on this race. But remember, the championship for the Europa Cup is decided by adding the placings together from both races. But John Lugbill, certainly the winner here of this race at Nottingham. The individual championship decided by adding the two places together. So at the end of the Canadian single competition here on the artificial white water course at Nottingham, the second run result means that America have a clean sweep. In first place, John Lugbill. 
second David Hearn and Jed Prentice third and look at that less than half a second between the top three the best of the British Gareth, Gareth Marriott in fifth so victory to America John Nugbill then the champion a total of three points by virtue of his victory here today plus second in Dublin and a clean sweep for America Jose Vidmar for Yugoslavia fourth the Italian De Monte in fifth place the big surprise was the defending champion Elizabeth Sharpman down in seventh after hitting three gates Great Britain Karen Davis the 22 year old from Gloucester in second place after this morning's first run and looking to try and catch the leader Miriam Drusami who had something like seven seconds advantage over so the job is clear she mustn't hit any of these gates and she's got to go quicker Kathy Hearn coming down to gate number 19 In fact, that's 17 she's just gone through coming across the stream to 18 upstream most experienced of all the women paddlers on the course today now 30 comes from Connecticut at the time she's collected three world gold medals in both slalom and wild water racing as well as collecting no less than 15 American national titles Titles. It's not a bad time from her on this run. Kathy really pushing on through that stopper. And inside the clock, but just five penalty seconds pushing her into second place. But that is an improvement on her first run. She should be pleased. And Karen Davis now coming down to this crucial part of the course. She really can't afford to make any mistakes here. Nicely through 15. 16, no problem. Just hesitated a second to wait for the water to help her across to 17. Just got offline there. Had to push, actually was using the concrete to push herself back, and that's her problem. She got offline on the previous gate. Now she's going to have to work really hard to get back into 18. She's managed to avoid hitting any of the poles. That's better, 19 just broken her concentration and rhythm fifth in last year's world championships in France and sixth in the Europa Cup a year before that and that's the best result she's ever had but improving all the time and when the day comes that Liz Sharman decides to retire well Karen Davis very much in the strong position to take over as Britain's number one paddler there's the time, and you can see what those errors have cost her. She would have been much more close to Miriam Jerusalem, who's still to come. And so it looks as if her first run from this morning will be the one that will count. Time for her, well behind, absolutely no penalties. She achieved that bit, third at the moment on this run. And she knows it. Dana Kladek in fourth place after this morning's run. And Ruxell through gate number 16, coming across to 17. Going quite well. The French seem to have found the line here at Nottingham. Very much a team effort trying to look at these gates, decide how to set up for each one and then put all of them together. Quite a lot of paddlers start from the last gate and work their way back up the course to find the line. In other words, how do I go through the last gate and then work backwards 
to how do I start going through the first game. The time not bad here for Anne Bruxell. This is not a bad effort from her. Of course, penalties if she's got any. That little hit on the pole there doesn't count because she's already gone through that game safely. Just outside, just one gate touch, she goes into fourth place. The leader after this morning's first run, Miriam Jerusalmi, with a big chance of winning her first Europa Cup championship now. First through there, didn't lose anything through that opening stopper. Now the ball is the leader. Dana Fladek from the United States in third place after this morning's first run. Safely through gate number 15. 16 was not a problem for her, but 17 was. You can see how that haystack has pushed her sideways there, and she almost collided with that gate. 18 now brings the kayak round. 12 foot of kayak trying to drive across that cushion there. That's slightly better, but she was lucky again. Lost a paddle stroke there, and that's almost two seconds when you come to a stop like that. From Bethesda in Maryland. Born in Czechoslovakia, but emigrated to the United States when she was five. Currently the US national champion, the best she's ever been in Europa Cup, that was ninth. This is in touch. Look at this for Dana Kladek. Can she get inside Miriam's time? Not quite. But it's another good run. No penalties. She moves up to second place. Marie Francoise Grange. Champion in 1984 of the Europa Cup. The runner up two years ago. Here's Miriam at gate number 15. No problem so far. 26 from Marseille. Got a bronze medal in this competition two years ago. The runner-up in the World Championships behind Liz Sharman last year in France. And very much on form. That's nice through there. Miriam going well. You can see the kayak never stops moving. And that's the real secret of this sport. Round she comes. Look at the effort, the breathing. Trying to beat that time of hers. That's her own time from this morning's first run. If she can improve on that, that will be another good effort. Up to the last gate, the 25th gate. She looks to be very close. This looks possible. Yeah. As far as we know, she's clear on all the gates. 309.36, just one five-second penalty. She, uh, therefore, will have to settle for that first time this morning. And here's Marie-Francoise Grange, her teammate. through the upstream combination at 14. A little wide there, you can see that big swirl of water. Maybe the best way is to go a little tighter to that gate. Very definite decision there by Marie Francoise to take that gate by putting a kayak sideways and then bringing the bow round. Comes down to 18. Just rested there. You saw her stop paddling, and every time she does that, she loses time. And although she's 
avoiding the poles. She's just losing those precious seconds. Round she comes to 23. Two gates to go, though, for Marie-Francoise Grange. I remember, at the moment, leading the race, her teammate, Miriam Jerusami, and Dana Schladek in second place for the United States, with Kathy Hearn at the moment in third spot. No problem there, don't worry about hitting that pole as she drives for the line, and this is a very good time there. She's got five penalties to add, 3.14.68, and uh, it's uh, pushed her into third place. The defending champion of the Europa, Europa Cup, Liz Sharman of Great Britain, looking for a hat-trick of victories. She won this competition in 1982 and again in 1986. Coming down to gate number one, the upstream gate, the red and white poles. Now, only seventh after that first run, she hit three gates this morning, so what she's really got to do is to go fast and clean. She daren't touch anything, she's got to find some speed as well. Gate number two, downstream. And now across the three. Two sets of combinations set in this first half of the course across the river. Eight and nine and thirteen and fourteen. There's really the best of the British women paddlers for something like ten years now. She also has another distinction, Liz. She's the only athlete on this course today who'll be going to Seoul. As well as trying to defend her Europa Cup championship this year, she's managed to earn herself a place in the British sprint team. And there's one five-second penalty that won't help her. I was saying that she's going to be going to Seoul. She'll be paddling with Jan Waller in the sprint K2. Whatever she does today, it's a magnificent achievement to even make selection for two disciplines in the, in the space of one season. Now the upstream combination, 13. Watch her through here. Nicely through there. Using that water, and she won't lack encouragement here. two Europa Cup championships, two world championships. She's also the reigning world champion, Liz. If anybody can pull this back, it'll be her. She's got to find something extra special here. Oh, and that's it. Surely that's got to be it. She got herself into all sorts of a mess there. Coming into that gate, the water pushed her out. But credit to her, she's keeping it going. She's up through 18, but we know that's 10 seconds that will be added to her time. Round she goes to number 20. That's the time she's chasing. It's a very tall order. Remember those 10 seconds that have to be added. She's uh, done wonders on that corner. She absolutely charged round. But surely this is too much. Remember, she's going to have to be there at about 2.04, 2.05 when she gets to the line, and she can't possibly do that. But Liz knows that the Europa Cup is about the aggregate of your both your runs, the one she had in Dublin last week when she won, and today's race, and 3.14.09 after all those disasters is a marvellous performance. She finishes in seventh place here, but I know she'll be disappointed. So the ladies' kayak championship goes to France. Miriam Jerusami, the champion for the first time. And her teammate, Marie-Francoise Grange, once again has to settle for the silver medal. The best of the Americans, Dana Hladek in third place, and Elizabeth Sharman, despite all those troubles, in fourth, in the worst possible position, I suppose, just out of the medals. Well, Miriam, one year ago in the world championships, Liz Sharman, managed to push you into second place, but today it's a bit different, isn't it? 
Yes, I'm glad. I mean, I'm a bit disappointed for her, but I'm very glad for myself because Liz is uh, very good. She did a mistake today, but uh, she's, uh, she's a top paddler. She's very good. She showed it with uh, her practice run yesterday. Miriam, you know this course pretty well because you've done quite a lot of training here. Tell me about the race today. Uh, I think we all thought that was, uh, it was an easy course, but uh, when we saw the result, it, uh, nobody was clear. Uh, maybe the second one, I don't know. So it was pretty tough course, physical and uh, quite technical, but not very difficult move, move. Well, putting together your third place in Dublin and your victory here gives you the Europa Cup Championship. First time you've won it. Yes, first time, yes. It's a good improvement. Last year, second. Last year, yes, second. And this year, first. So I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> so you should be. Many congratulations. Thank you. The first run of the Canadian doubles now completed. And the leaderboard shows Thomas Loser and Frank Hemmer of West Germany in the lead by six seconds over the French pair of Saidi and Deval. The French also occupying third spot with the duo of Le Lan and Le Freak. This is Alan Meikle and Colin Brown at uh, gate number 18, the upstream gate. Seventh two years ago in the Europa Cup and also seventh last year in the World Championships. And they've been paddling for four years together as a pair. Find it uh, a little bit more difficult now to get together. Alan works up in Scotland, but Collins moved down south to Shepparton in Middlesex. And they tend to do most of their work apart and then come together for the main team training sessions and, of course, competition. Time on the left there the one they're trying to beat that's from the West Germans Hemmer and Loza that's from this morning's first run remember you have two runs in slalom but it's your best time that counts don't worry about hitting that pole it doesn't count because they've already safely negotiated that gate and 319.29 that's uh, not really an improvement on this morning's run they'll uh, be a little bit disappointed Joe Jacoby and Scott Strasburg of the United States. Fourth after this morning's first run. Currently fourth in the world rankings. Matty Brothers from Switzerland coming through gate number 19. And upstream through 20. And 68 as they go round there. Two Swiss brothers into the last three gates. Coming down to 24, and you just see the bow of the kite there to make this move. Push off the concrete wall. Not particularly stylish, but effective. The student and the school teacher coming to the end of their run. The 10 penalties they score 33207 and that puts them ninth at the moment and that is a little bit of an improvement on their first run this morning now West Germany Stefan Bittner Volker Nerlich Stefan in the bow Volker in the stern big powerful stopper trying to hold the, the Canadian canoe there They've really got to work hard. Scott Strasburg and Joe Jacoby of the United States through 15 safely now onto 16. Oh, have problems there. The water just pushing them to their left and giving them all sorts of problems.
nine. 19, close three. to the wall. 20, hard against that concrete. Scott there in the bow. He's a cabinet maker, that's his job. And Joe Jacoby in the stern. Well, he's a pizza driver. That's how he makes his money. The rest of the time, these two men are out on the water trying to become the best in the world. This effort, not too bad, going through the centre part of the stopper. Just leading back to get more purchase on that paddle. 317.88. It's pretty respectable from that pair. Only one penalty, they go fourth. They should be pleased with that, not a bad effort. Well, Jamie McEwen and Lecky Haller are just about the most experienced Canadian doubles on the water in this event. Jamie in the bow, bronze medalist in the 72 Olympic Games in the single Canadian category, and very much the inspiration of American whitewater paddling. Coming down to 17, Bittner and Nurlich. Five seconds there, look at that, just caught the bowman's back, his shoulder on the right-hand side, Stefan's shoulder. Low on that gate, both of them looking a little tired now as they come to the final section of this course. You can just see there the rhythm just lost there between the two paddle strokes. Drops into that, didn't really paddle into that with any particular pace. Again, we'll see this uh, rather ungainly push off the concrete. Around they go. And a long way from the gate. Stopper almost holding them there. And they are really tired. Thierry Saidi and Emmanuel Del Rey for France. Jamie McEwen and Lecky Haller now at uh, gate number 16, and that's five seconds penalty. Silver medalist in last year's World Championships. They also won a gold medal back in 1983 in Murano. Both of these men ideally suited to paddle to each other, both six foot tall, both 170 pounds in weight, ideally matched. Very, very experienced. Jamie in the bow, 35. Lecky Haller, 31. The sport of slalom canoeing back in the Olympic Games in Barcelona in 1982. And who's to say that they won't be trying to earn a place in the United States team for that? Remember, they've got certainly one penalty to add. right through that stopper and 1444 it's just inside on the clock where's that going to put them French pair of Thierry Saidi and Emmanuel Del Rey further down the course this time coming out of 17 Europa Cup silver medalists a couple of years ago and certainly in with the chance now of taking the championship very close remember the placings added together from the race in Ireland with the race here today at Nottingham
nicely round that little concrete island there. being cheered on here very close to that clock should get inside on the time we'll wait for the judges to insert all their penalties that goes through the computer system before we can actually confirm the result they look pretty pleased with that I think they've done quite well This is Thomas Loser and Frank Hemmer, the leaders after the first run this morning for West Germany. French pair now, Michel Seidy, Jerome Deval. And there's another five second penalty. And upstream through 18. And another five seconds, just trying to sneak under there. And certainly this isn't going to improve their performances. Here they go, through 21. And as they go around the rock towards the last three gates, still it's the uh, West Germans. Loza and Hemmer who have the lead. That's their time there on the top left-hand corner of the screen. Mikkel and Brown, the British pair, currently lying in second place today on this course. Just outside on the clock, ten penalties to add, they go third. So here's the leader, the leading pair, 74, Thomas Loza in the bow, Frank Hemmer in the stern. Exactly the same height and weight, both of these men, 178, their height, 80 kilos, the pair of them. Three times the champions of West Germany. And of course, they were the fastest men in Dublin. So if they can win here and add first place to their result in Dublin, they will be the Europa Cup champions. And that'll be a big improvement because the best they've ever been in this competition was 10th. That was two years ago. Nicely through there, and they look as if they could get inside their own best time, which they set this morning in the first run. Don't worry about that gate, they're allowed to do it. And this is a really good effort from the West Germans, and surely that must be the Europa Cup championship for them. Well, 20 penalties they got on this second round, but uh, not to worry, that first run time will stand, and that's the one that will give them victory in the Europa Cup Championship. So the result of the Canadian doubles, victory to West Germany. Thomas Loza and Frank Hemmer, four seconds ahead of Alan Meikle and Colin Brown of Great Britain. A really good effort by the British pair. France in third and fourth, the best of the American crews, fifth. And so that means the overall Europa Cup championship goes to West Germany. The best pair of gates. Ninth in Dublin on that first run. That was quite a respectable performance. over the three minutes and uh, another man 
He's got ideas about his performance there. Just five penalties, but uh, 22nd place. Marian Strukels of Yugoslavia. Bronze medalist last year in the World Championship, seventh a couple of years ago in the Europa Cup. Russ Smith now of Great Britain coming down to gate number 17. British champion in 86 and 87. Just watch as he goes here. Really digs the paddle in, looking for some solid water. Make that turn to steer around the kayak. Four metres long. Just weighs about 18 pounds. Very light, but very strong. Made out of carbon Kevlar. And Russ Smith powering on down. Just really going well. Now, this is a much better performance from him. He's uh, fast on the clock here. Now, if he can keep this going... This is a much, much better run by Russ Smith. Oh, just one correction stroke. That cost him a little bit of time. Just this and the stopper to go for Smith. 50 second, 50, 81. Can he get there? Not quite. 52.06. No penalties. He goes into second place, but he splits the two Frenchmen. Better. Much better. On his way, Martin Hemmer of West Germany, the 20-year-old soldier. Burst through the stopper. Here's Yugoslavia's uh, Marian Strukel. Certainly in with an excellent chance of this championship. eighth in Dublin. Remember the placings of both today's race and the Irish race added together to produce the overall champion. But that, uh, that really won't have helped. Nicely through there. Around the turn. Coming down to the last two gates. Puts that in, uses it as a rudder, brings the kayak round, and now try and stay as close as he can to this gate. Look at him. Correction stroke, draw stroke there on the right, brings the kayak round. When you see that correction stroke, you know that it's an indication he hasn't quite got the line right. Clock ticks past, and uh, although he's got no penalties, only 60 at the end of his run. On course now, Eugenio Salvi of Italy. That's pretty good through there. Verona, an economic student. Martin Hemmer, the West German, coming up through 18. And that's quite nice as he comes down to 20. Use that cushion of water well there. Left-handed now. No problems there. Best of the West Germans, only eighth at the moment, so Martin Hemmer looking to move up the table. Seventh in Dublin. Just uh, two seconds, just one gate touched on the way down into 15th place. So, number 112 is Melvin Jones of Great Britain. Hales Owen in Burma. Albert Woods, please go to the press test. Albert Woods, please go to the press test. Albert Woods, please go to the press test. 
Salvi going across to gate number 14. Oh, and uh, I think caught both of those bowls. If he did, it'll be 10 seconds, certainly five. And uh, that's what happens if you go for speed. He tried to cut it too tight. Through the cushion there, stopper well negotiated. So he comes down to gate number 20, 25 on the course, and another careless move there from the Italian. I mean, it really doesn't help to try and cut them that tight. And he's going to have to rely, I think, on his first run being the better one, the time that will count for his standing. Salvi going well. Now, 1-1-3, one, one, Laurent Brissot in the gate. The man who led after the first run this morning and in with a major chance of this Europa Cup championship. His brother currently in third place. And away he goes. Coming out to the right, slightly different line here as he goes to the stopper. That's a, a deliberate choice to do that and bring himself across, set himself up for gate one. A perfect example of choosing the line. But here's Melvin Jones now, Russ Smith safely down, a much improved performance. What has Melvin Jones learned? Along with Russ Smith and Richard Fox, a member of our gold medal winning team, you can see the British contingent running down the bankside there giving him all the encouragement he needs. Jones from Birmingham, a member of Central Paddlers. Fourth in this year's season-long world rankings. He's never really had a very good result in Europa Cup. And he's up on the clock. Look at this. Surely he must get into the lead. But is he clear? 44, 45, going over the line now. 46, 73, and that's really clear. First, absolutely clear. Melvin Jones of Great Britain goes in the lead. Love it. That's what it's all about. The defending champion, Richard Fox, only third after the first run, but this man has a reputation for turning it on. Well, tight to that left-hand side as he comes down to gate number one. Three times Europa Cup champion, three times world champion. What can he do? Victory is what he needs. This is Laurent Brissot coming down to gate number 15, the real tricky section on the course here. Remember, he led after the first round. Brissot going really well now. The 22-year-old trains with his brother Manuel at uh, Avignon on the River Rhone. And these two have really set the pace in this men's kayak championship. Very close to that gate, didn't lose much time. Coming across to 19, set close to the concrete. Here to 20, upstream. Oh, just very close, but got away with it. Tenth in the World Championships last year. Fourth in Dublin last week, and that's really what counts here, because you add the two places together. If he was fourth in Dublin, if he could be first here, give him a total of five, that would be a very good aggregate to have. And there's Melvin Jones' time on the left, and he's going to try and chase that in, and he'll never do it, Briso. He'll never get in front of that, and that's helping Richard Fox's chances as he comes down. Briso now going to the line. 49.91, and that's slower than his first time, but he goes into second place. So Melvin Jones has the lead from Laurent Briso, Britain's Russ Smith in third place. Richard Fox coming out of 14, coming down to 15. The backside teeming with people running down, watching the champion. Can he do it on his own home water? 28 years of age, the real star of British paddling, respected the world over for his great talent and rewarded a couple of years ago with an MBE for his services to the sport and his achievements in whitewater canoeing. Nottingham, his hometown, this is home water.
can he do it in front of his own crowd? There's the clock, 2.46.73, he's got Gates 22, 23, 24 and 25 to go. Charging round the corner there, come on Richard, they're looking for a victory from him. Now he's going to have to turn it on, speed out of the gate, that was quite good. Up into 25, he can't afford the slightest error now, Fox. Rack first in the world at the moment. Powering down, can he do it, can he do it? He's just outside on the clock, he's not going to beat his teammate. 49-92, 49-42, he goes into second place for this afternoon. Remember, that's got to be added. He knows that's got to be added to his position from Dublin. The computer taking all these, <laughs> all these scores into account. Here's number 116. Well, this is Janusz Skok of Yugoslavia, and a big danger to everybody. The winner of the race in Dublin. Janusz, remember, one in Dublin. Skok. One one five Pierre Paolo Ferrazzi, the runner up in Dublin. And Ferrazzi didn't have too happy a run when he came down this morning. Uh, coming through gate 23 is 115, the Italian Pierpaolo Ferrazzi. And something like 10 seconds, just a little bit more for him to get through this gate. I don't think he's going to be able to do that. Remember, he was the runner up in Dublin. He'll have to add this position to his other one. Don't worry about the pole, it doesn't matter. It doesn't count, I should say, and 48 58 goes seventh and he'll be putting that together with his second place but of course still Janish got the leader after Ireland on the course and here is the man and it's all down to him Scott through 15 coming down to 16 Comes through 18 and he's hit problems there. Now he got held there. He wasn't very effective when he came through that gate. <laughs> 25-year-old from Ljubljana in the north of Yugoslavia. Coming round now with the last three gates. Best he's ever been in this competition was 12th. That was two years ago. There's the clock ticking away. That time there on the left of Melvin Jones. The best time on this course in the men's kayak competition today. And it's uh, looking pretty close between him. He's got something like six seconds, but surely he can't do that. Coming through the stopper, Jones is certainly going to get the victory on the day, but it's the end position of Scott that's so vital. 47-91, he goes into fifth place. Now we have an interesting situation. He actually goes into seventh place just five seconds on the penalty, so he's got a seventh place to add to his position in Dublin. The winner then of this afternoon's kayak race here in Nottingham, Melvin Jones from Birmingham, 2 minutes 46.73, more than two and a half seconds ahead of Richard Fox, with the Frenchman Laurent Brissot in third place. Russ Smith, a good fourth place for him too. So all three Britons in the top five. And what that means on the overall caption is that Richard Fox has retained his Europa Cup championship, making it a record fourth victory for him. Five points his total ahead of Melvin Jones, who finishes with six points. The Frenchman Laurent Brissot in seventh with Yugoslavia's Janis Scott, the winner in Dublin, pushed back off the medal podium. Well, Melvin, you must be quite pleased with that. Oh, I'm very pleased. It's nice to see your name at the top of the list, number one. It's a good feeling. Big improvement from this morning. Yeah, that's right. I came down 
I had a five second penalty. My time was good, but obviously the penalty put me back to fourth position. So I had to sort of go for it on the second run. Everything worked out well. I know that uh, as you were going down the course there, you were hearing that Russ Smith had actually set a fast time. Uh, was that a help? Well, that's, I was at the start, actually, before I set off, I heard it came over the tannoy that, that Russ Smith had put a fast time in second position. So I thought, yeah, we've, I've got to go for it. There's nothing else to it. Well, Richard, uh, Melvin actually beat you on the day, but he did do you a bit of a favour today in the Europa Cup. Well, yeah, he squeezed, uh, squeezed Lauren Briso down a place, and that, that helped me win the cup. But uh, Melvin's been paddling really well this year. He's been second so close behind so many times. I thought, well, one day he's just going to break through. I heard his time 10 seconds before I set off, and I thought that's going to be really hard to beat. I was a little bit conservative because I was afraid of you know, losing, losing the Europa Cup, if you like. So I sort of hung on to a safe run strategy, and uh, I, you know, I was pleased to come second, especially you know, coming second to uh, another British paddler, and Russ Smith coming in fourth. That's the best we've ever done. So that's the Europa Cup completed, and well done, West Germany, winners of the event with France a silver medalist and Great Britain picking up the bronze for the fourth time.